So now let's start with the topic, the nephron structure. Nephron, this is the classical structure of the nephron, which is given in all the books. So nephron is the basic structure, wherein the primary part, which is supplying the blood vessels is the glomerulus. Glomerulus is nothing but the arteries, which is having an afferent arteriole and an efferent arteriole and various interconnected arterioles. So this is the glomerular structure and followed by it, the nephron is the primary structure of the kidney. The Bowman's capsule is there. This is the structure of the nephron. So that it starts with a capsule, which is like a ball. So it is Bowman's capsule. And below the Bowman's capsule, the classical convoluted tubule is there. So whenever there is some convolutions or a zigzag kind of action that is called as convoluted tubule. So it is proximal convoluted tubule. Then followed by that, there is a loop. This loop is called as loop of Henle. This is called as loop of Henle. And the descending side is called as the descending loop of Henle. On the ascending side, we have two types of loop of Henle. Ascending one is thin and one more is very thick. So there is thin ascending loop of Henle and thick ascending loop of Henle. So these are, these are the structures and followed by that, there is one more convolution here. Proximally, we had one convoluted tubule. So distally also there is one more convoluted tubule. This is called as distal convoluted tubule or DCT. Then coming to the final collection where all the collection of nephrons will have and that, that will form the collecting tubule. They will be the one which is collecting tubule. And collecting tubule of various nephrons collect together and forms the collecting duct. So finally, they will end up in a collecting duct. So this is the basic structure of a nephron. So coming to the types of nephron. There are two different types of nephron. As you can see here, I have written there is one group of nephron which is called as cortical group of nephron. In this, the major portion of the nephron is predominantly in the cortex. So whenever we take the structure of the kidney, the innermost region is called as the medulla. So this region is called as the medulla and the outer region is called as the cortex. So this cortical nephrons, predominantly all most of their parts of the nephron will be there in the cortex. Then comes the another group of nephron, which is the medullary nephron. Here, the loop of Henle is maximally present in the medullary group of nephrons. So coming to the differences between them, how, what is the percentage of it? The maximum percentage is contributed by the cortical nephrons, which is 85 percentage. Whereas the medullary nephrons, they are around 15 percentage only. And where is the Bowman's capsule? Look at the location. The Bowman's capsule in the cortical nephron is located in the cortex. The Bowman's capsule is located in the cortex. Where is the Bowman's capsule of the medullary nephron? Even for the medullary nephron, it is there in the cortex only. It is there in the cortex, but if you ask me very specifically, it is near the medulla, that is juxta medulla. That's why these group of nephrons are also called as juxta medullary nephrons. Their cortex is just located next to the medulla. Then coming to the loop of Henle. Loop of Henle, usually it is very short for that of the cortical nephrons. Whereas the loop of Henle is very, very long for the medullary nephrons. These loop of Henle's are very, very long and they have a very, very specific function also, which we'll discuss. So coming to the function, what is the most important function of the kidney? It is excretion of waste. That's why 85% of the kidney is playing the excretion of waste function. They will be performing excretion of waste. Then coming to the medullary nephron, because of its long loop of Henle, which we'll be studying in the countercurrent mechanism, it is involved in concentration of the urine. So the primary function here is concentration of the urine. Concentration of urine. So this is the functional difference between them. And the capillary supplying them is also very, very different. Whereas the capillaries for cortical nephrons is the peritubular capillaries. Peritubular capillaries. Around the tubule, it is like a wounded up structure. Peritubular capillaries. Whereas the capillaries in case of medullary is vasa recta. The special feature of vasa recta is it runs parallel to that of the loop of Henle. The vasa recta runs parallel to the loop of Henle. Then coming to the blood flow, oxygen and partial pressure of oxygen. All of them are very, very high for the cortical nephron. They have a huge amount of blood supply. Whereas for the medullary nephron, the blood supply, O2, PO2, everything is slow. So what is the O2 extraction? Already, if you have a huge supply, you don't need to extract more from there. So the O2 extraction here is low. The supply is very, very low in case of medullary nephron. That's why the O2 extraction is usually on a higher side in this 
medullary nephron and that is the reason the medullary nephrons are more prone for more prone for one more condition that is ischemia because it is extracting maximum oxygen so whenever the supply of oxygen goes in for a depletion even at minimal levels they are more prone for ischemia they will have a severe ischemic response so this is the basic difference between the types of nephron the cortical nephrons and the medullary nephrons now coming to the more important structure that is a filtration barrier the filtration has to happen from the glomerulus and come to the bowman's membrane so it has some barrier this filtration barrier this filtration barrier has various structures which we have to remember out of them the most important one is first starting with the vessel in the vessel all of us know the vessel is having the endothelial cells they have the endothelial cells and this endothelial cells have glyco calyx this glyco calyx they are negatively charged they are negatively charged that is important next coming to the immediately below the endothelium we will have the basement membrane so the basement membrane is the next structure it has something called as heparin sulfate then finally we have the food process of photocytes the food process of photocytes will be on this side as you can see here these are the food process of photocytes this food process of photocytes also have glycoproteins basically all these structures will have a negatively charged particles what is the function of it is it usually repels the other negatively charged particles so coming to this pore size the pore size is just 4 nanometer it is very 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 small but this pore size will be helpful in eliminating some of the substance to be not filtered we don't want everything to be filtered and come into the gfr we want only specific substance to be filtered and that only will be allowed by this pore this pore size is 4 nanometer so any substances which is below 1.8 nanometer they are freely filtered they are freely filtered there is no problem in their filtration whereas the substance in between 1.8 and 4 there is a catch there then we will discuss about the more than 4 nanometer obviously the pore size is less than 4 nanometer so more than 4 nanometer the substance is not filtered so there is no confusion in these two areas but whenever the size is between 1.8 to 4 nanometer then there becomes a condition if the if the particle is positively charged and if the particle is negatively charged if the particle is positively charged all this membrane had negative charge so what they will happen they will get attracted and they can be filled out filtered out so there will be filtered if these are filtered whereas the negatively charged ones already negative charge is there in the membrane so it will be rippled off so it will be rippled and not filtered this is important why because this all of us will be reading something called as albuminuria in diseases which is the first substance which is appearing in the new urine whenever the charges in the basement membrane is demolished like it is abolished so this albumin belongs to this category this albumin is a negatively charged substance the proteins are negatively charged substance usually they are not filtered at all but whenever there is any injury or any positive or any charges which are lost the negative charges are lost in the membrane then automatically these substances will start to get filtered so albumin is the first substance which appears in the urine due to the loss of charges then coming to the proteins there are three important proteins present in this membrane the proteins are nephrin podocin and alpha actinin and we should know what happens whenever there is a mutation to each of them whenever there is a mutation to nephrin it will cause a disease called as nephrotic syndrome nephrotic syndrome and it is a type of congenital nephrotic syndrome congenital nephrotic syndrome whereas for podocin what it does is it causes nephrotic syndrome but a severe form that is steroid resistant nephrotic syndrome it also causes nephrotic syndrome but it is steroid resistance also so podon is podosin is more dangerous more requirement of the protein is there then alpha actinin whenever it is getting mutated what will happen is it will produce a disease called as focal segmental glomerulosclerosis it is focal segmental glomerulosclerosis this is all about the basic structure of a nephron